Hello everyone, it's Trina here from thereisacardforthat.ca and today I'm going to make this encouragement or congratulations card using some Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. So I'm going to start out with the Shadow Box Theater add-on die set from Lawn Fawn. And I pre-cut all of my pieces ahead of time just because there was a lot of them and my space doesn't really allow me to have my die cut machine under the camera and we all know what die cutting looks like. So I had cut out four of the theater frames, one of the base and the curtains. So I'm just using some Distress ink to ink those up and give them some color. Um, I had thought about using Copic markers to color them because I am using Copic friendly cardstock as I always do, but I didn't want super smooth coloring the way Copics do because they blend in and they saturate the paper and it's super smooth, which is wonderful when you're coloring, but I wanted some, some gradients just to make like that bottom base look like wood, but not this time. Uh, so to put the frames together. I'm using the Nuvo Precision Glue Pen. And this is the first time I've used this pen. I do like precision tips for my glue. And so when I saw this one from Nuvo, I was like, well, gotta give this a try. <laughs> because I don't know if you've noticed, but I kind of like Nuvo a lot with a lot of things. <laughs> and it's, and they're super great. Um, so I had no problems with this glue. Like you don't have to squeeze it especially because it's brand new. Um, but yeah, so far, so far it's it's pretty good. There was no clogging uh, or anything like that. So, so far, so far it's on my I would recommend it list. For the curtains, I'm using some, I want to say candied apple because it's super bright red and that's what I wanted. Like, you know, those old school theater curtains and I wanted that super bright red, so I'm coloring, or sponging, I guess, I'm not really coloring, no. Um, the curtains with that, and then I am going to use either fired brick or barn door, just a deeper red to give it some accent afterwards. Um, this took a little bit of time, like this is, this is sped up, because I still wanted it to be solid, and then I just use a piece of sticky note paper so that my fingerprints don't get on it, and then I get red all over everything else I'm doing for the rest of the card, and I'm sure I still got ink everywhere because that's just that's just how it happens, and that's that's the fun part, right? It's, it's like it's like your little badge of honor, <laughs> like inky hands. Uh, so I'm just going back and forth over the top of this, um, the frill piece. I don't know what that top curtain part is called and then I'm going to hold it in place again with the sticky note and just pull it up. I start off of the paper and pull it up onto the paper just to give it a little bit of definition and then I am going to do that again with the actual curtains on the side. In the end product in the picture you don't really see a lot of the definition but I think you would miss it if it wasn't there. It's one of those things where it just seems to work, but if it wasn't there, you'd be like, oh, that looks kind of flat, and then that would make everybody sad, and nobody wants to be sad. We're making cards because cards make us happy, and so that's just, that's just that, yeah. So I'm just going to clean all of that up um, just with a baby wipe, and then I am going to move on to the next part. So I am going to stamp this cute little bear from the Critter Concert, a Lawn Fawn stamp set, of course. Uh, with me Memento Tuxedo Black ink on the same piece of Copic cardstock, and I didn't move my ink pad, so <laughs> I had to stamp him again because he got in the way. And I mean, had I been using the Misty like I normally do, it wouldn't have been a problem. But it's all good. It's just a scrap piece of paper, and it's not like I was doing a one layer or anything like that. So to color this little guy in, I'm going to start with the horn, and if you watched the last video that I used, I really liked the way the E44 and Y28 gave it that old brassy look because it just it just looks good. I didn't want them like super bright gold or silver or anything like that. I wanted I wanted that old brassy look. And we had talked about in that last video that the next time I color this bear, I was going to probably do him as a panda, and so that's what's happening. 
he's going to be a panda because <laughs> how cute is that? Um, so I'm using for the dark parts, the W markers just to give it a warmer, a warmer touch. Um, you could totally use your neutrals or your toners or even your cool grays. It doesn't matter, but I like to use the warm grays for this. And then I'm just being very careful around my edges because pandas don't really blend. They don't blend together. Like there's not a soft gradient between the darkness of his leg and then the white of his back. And so you kind of, you kind of just gotta, you gotta draw it in when he doesn't, isn't drawn out like a panda originally. For the white areas of him, um, I could have left it white, but then again, I thought it would be flat. So I'm using my cool grays, very, very light touch to just add a little bit of shadow to the white spots. And here it looks a lot grayer than we would want it to look, but as it dries, the paper lightens it up. So I'm just gonna cut him out here with my scissors and I like to go just around him very carefully. And I'm just using the Cutter B scissors and I'm right-handed, obviously, so I hold the scissors in my right hand and I do most of the moving of the paper, not the scissors. I hold them at an angle, um, just a slight angle so that I can get a good view of how I'm cutting. And then I just go around it and I like to leave the a little white border as though I had used the coordinating dies. But of course, I don't have the coordinating dies. I've told you guys before, I have the Scan and Cut. And while I love my Scan and Cut, it just seems like a lot of work to like get it all set up and everything like that for one image. If I was mass producing these cards, oh yeah, I would totally be using my Scan and Cut to cut those out. Here I'm going to use my black glaze pen just to add a little bit more into his eye and on the tip of his nose and then I am going to set him aside to dry. So now I am going to use my card base which is the same cardstock, 110 pound uh, heavyweight cardstock and we are going to fold that at as it's going to be a landscape so it's still four and a quarter by five and a half it's just sideways. So I'm going to put my pieces together because I want to know where I can place my greeting. So I'm just gonna put that on there and then place the greeting underneath and then I'm going to use the Misty because I don't really wanna mess this part up. That would be sad. <laughs> so I'm just tilting it so I can see that it's straight because I try really hard not to get my head in the way. You're not here to see the back of my head. You're here to see what I'm making. And then I used my pencil just to outline the inside so I can see where the background of that piece is because there's no background to this because it's meant for the shadow box card but I'm not putting it on a shadow box card I'm just creating a little bit of dimension on a regular card um, so this allows me to know where I'm going to place that back and I'm also going to add a little bit of color to that background so that you can see it through the stage behind the panda and again that's one of those things that you don't you don't really have to do it and you could probably use any color you wanted but if I didn't do it you would notice that it's missing so I'm adding the second part I wasn't originally going to put the because you're awesome on the outside I was gonna put that on the inside but things happen and I forgot I was gonna do that <laughs> so now it's on the outside so I'm going to be using some post-it notes here and I'm going to mask off around that line that I did and it's just slightly outside of that because we're going to have to erase that pencil mark because once pencil gets trapped under ink it's just there forever <laughs> there's no getting it out and the ink's just shielding it so I'm using uh, weathered wood I think it's either weather wood or Dormy Sky. I think it's Weathered Wood. Maybe. It's just a neutral color to go in the background because when you're on stage, behind you is usually darker because the lights are shining at you and you can't see that. So it just, it adds a little bit of depth. Then I'm going to use the Precision Glue Pen again 
all around the back of the frame so that I can put it on there. I could easily have used uh, two-way tape or my tape runner or anything like that, but the glue pen was sitting right in front of me and I'm kind of lazy. I'm kind of lazy and that stuff was far away, which is really funny because in like 10 seconds, you're going to see me use the two-way tape anyway. <laughs> so I'm placing my curtains and that top frilly thing. I don't, I don't know what that's called. Um, around the frame so I can figure out where I want to put my panda and he's going to be popped up on a little bit of foam tape same foam tape as always straight from the dollar store it's in the like home hardware section because it's mounting tape people apparently use tape to hang pictures on their walls <laughs> it just kind of blows my mind because I don't even like putting nails in my walls I use command hooks they just peel right away if I'm like, oh, I've changed my mind. I want that picture over like four inches. Then I don't have to worry about it. But I, I don't, I don't know. Some people just use foam tape for their walls, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea. So to get the curtains stuck right on, I am going to use, I believe this is quarter inch. Quarter inch because it fits in the little frame. Uh, score tape to go back and forth. I'm going to peel those off and then I'm going to place my curtains and that top frilly thing on top of the frame. I had considered using ink on the frame as well, but with so much of the frame being covered, it really felt unnecessary. It felt like just completely unnecessary. I don't even have the words for <laughs> how unnecessary that felt. Um, so I'm going to put this on here. And as it turns out, that little uh, frilly thing is just slightly bigger than the frame, which makes sense because it would be on the shadow box normally. So very carefully, thank goodness I didn't press it all the way down. I had to peel it up and then more center it. So next I am going to use some clear Wink of Stella on the, on the horn to make it shiny because it's me and I have to have shiny things on, on my card. I had used the little curtain ties die to cut some gold glitter cardstock. And at first, when I first cut them, and it was kind of a good thing I had done this off screen, I was like, oh, because I had this tiny little strip of gold cardstock and I'm like oh I'll just cut the same thing twice no they're actually different opposite shapes because that makes sense because they're opposite curtains and that that didn't really occur to me at first so I ended up having to die cut them twice which is totally fine because it was just a scrap piece of glitter cardstock and I'm kind of a hoarder so I don't get rid of them um, so I used the glue pen again to hold those in place and then I was kind of consider kind of considering about how I can't talk today it's early <laughs> I've done this so much. Actually, that's not true. It's not early. It's like after 10. <laughs> but it was like my first day to sleep in, in in some time. So in my stash, I have these little music note sequins. And I think they're supposed to be like confetti or something like that. I probably got them at the dollar store. It's not listed. I like, like shiny things. <laughs> like a little magpie that way. It's like, oh, shiny. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. Gotta have it. And I was cleaning out my stash and I was like, oh, I should get rid of these. And then I was like, no, I'm going to keep them because you never know. And then Lon Fawn came out with this Critter Concert stamp set and now they're perfect. Now they're perfect for everything. To adhere those down, I'm just using my little toothpick DIY quick stick tool and it is the same one. This thing, it lasts forever and it cost me like a one hundredth of a cent to make. <laughs> and some Ranger Multi Medium Matte Adhesive to stick it down. So I'm just going to put those in there and then you do need to let it sit for a while because of course it's, it's sparkly and shiny and it holds really well. To finish off the card, I am going to just use a little bit of glossy accents over the horn just so that when it's done, it gives it a little bit of shine and a little extra dimension. It's just that little extra that is super nice that we all know we like on handmade cards. So that is our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button and click on over to my blog and Facebook post, which are linked down below. Hope you have a great day. Bye.